Talkwalling episode number 40. I'm John Conga. I'm Tony Rucco. And I'm Brian Halstrom. Talkwalling is proud to be bringing you the latest information from the bowling industry, bowling tips, and updates on the largest bowling internet website, bowlingball.com. You cannot believe it's been a month. One whole month. One whole month. Happy New Year. Yes, we're sorry that we didn't even give any warning before anything. Like just kind of December was crazy. We kind of Yeah, I think our last one was like November 22nd or something. Yeah, around 20, the time, 20th yeah. or something. But the holidays always get really busy for us, so we unfortunately don't take the time to, to shoot like we should. Okay. We didn't go away completely. So we hope, they, we hope you had a good Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. <laughs> ah, yes. All three of them. There's other holidays there's other, too, yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> Kwanzaa <laughs> Hanukkah. I'm sure there's others too. When's Rosh Hashanah? I have no clue. Okay. Um, if it's in December, happy Rosh Hashanah. I, I am not good with <laughs> holidays in any sort. So we figured out like that. Nah, probably not. That's all right though. Okay. They'll figure it out. We decided we're going to talk today. We've gone over a little bit on how to hook a bomb on the past, but we're going to get into a little more detail. Notice some comments being made on a article we just posted on bowlingball.com so we thought we'd kind of get into it a little bit more in depth yeah just just a little it's it, it's a subject that I don't think we could touch on the short of an episode and go into full detail but right. we'll kind of give you some of the basics um, I was thinking making sure making sure you know how your hand's supposed to come out of the ball in order to get the ball to curve yep. uh, and go over some of the other things. You see people doing some things sometimes to get the ball to hook that isn't always the best way to go. So um, we figure we touch on that a little bit. Right. Right. Uh, the, the first and easiest way is to, to have a ball drilled fingertip. Yeah, it's going to be a lot easier to do, to, to get the ball to hook when you're throwing a fingertip grip. When you throw a Absolutely. conventional grip, basically the way your hand comes out of the ball is your thumb gets out of it. And then the ball just comes off your fingers. So there's really no friction right. uh, or no hesitation. So the ball's just gonna it's gonna get off your hand. When you go fingertip as your after your thumb comes out, there's to get out of the fingers. There's a little bit of lifting motion that's needed, and that's, uh, that's which, what helps create that roll. Right, which is what creates the roll, which is what gets your hand in the proper position to get the ball to start to hook a little bit. So that's gonna be the best thing to start with. And people don't often don't realize that your thumb does come out before your fingers. There is that little hesitation in there yeah like yeah if you said. if you watch someone if even if you watch some of our videos and you if you can slow it down a little bit at the at the bottom you can see that our thumb is out of the ball and your fingers are kind of rolling up along the side of the ball right somebody made a comment on that article to give advice on how to practice throwing an underhand football or a, to throw a spiral underhand you'll notice right. as you're coming through the ball your thumb comes off and you kind of lift with your fingers mm -hmm. to create the spiral and it's kind of the same motion yeah, we always did. There was that one where you try and get the football up onto its point, kind of get it up onto the point quicker. Or you can take a if you take a tennis ball, if you when you're getting the right release, when the tennis ball bounces, it should kick left when, when you're getting the right spin on the ball. So that's a couple ways to practice it at home and get that feel. Doing that one, aren't you gonna kind of come up on the side you, a lot you, more? Yeah, you may. It's it's really meant to get your hand more this way. You know, to get that feeling, it, it, it's always easier if you go too much and then kind of back, take it to an extreme and back off. Gotcha. When you put a 15 or 14 pound bowling ball in your hand, you're not going to be able to do as much as you are, obviously, with a tennis ball. So, if you've been watching our videos lately, you see I'm doing that quite a bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it. I've had comments of people asking me why I'm coming around the ball. I'm creating more spin. I don't like it. I'm trying to come out more behind the ball. And it just takes practice. I've been out for six weeks now. Mm -hmm. Well, it's funny you mentioned the tennis ball. I've never actually tried a tennis ball, but I've done pool balls on the mm -hmm. pool table. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, you know, the uh, proprietary ball center may not like that. And that, that marks on the pool table, but hey, it works. It'll work. That's right. <laughs> uh, and the other thing I thought we'd touch on real quick, because you see a lot, of, a lot of youngsters doing it, and even people that don't bowl all the time, is you'll see them out there with just two fingers in the ball. Yeah. So I thought maybe we could touch on that real quick. You will get a lot of hook on the ball, or, or more hook on the ball, but it's not always the best way to go. You will. Uh, the one thing you got to watch for, you got to keep your wrist behind the ball. I've seen people out there with house balls that are actually coming around the side. Right. That could cause a little bit of damage to your wrist, and that's not going to make the ball hook. Uh, that's going to cause the ball to spin down the lane. You can see the ball spinning, but it's not going to hook. So keeping the hand underneath the ball is going to make it hook. So that the two finger release, keeping it under it, will generate a little bit more power. Right, and there is a difference, like you said. We'll we'll try and get. There's a video out there. Maybe we can get it where it shows different uh, degrees of axis tilt. Yeah, and what that does to ball reaction. 
that may be something good to show because there's a difference between spinning and rolling the ball properly to get a hook. I would like to see that too. So we'll see if we can get that on and get a link. If not, we'll create it. There you go. All right. If you have any other questions about this, let us know. You can email us, questions at talkbowling.com. Uh, leave a comment on this episode of talkbowling.com. Or Twitter us, twitter.com slash talkbowling. Twitter us. Yes. Twitter us. Tweet us. <laughs> yes. Whatever. Whatever you say. All right. We have some know. questions from viewers. Uh, one of them actually kind of goes with what we were just talking about. Daniel K., uh, will I be able to find my positive access point using a house ball with no thumb and then translate it over to a ball that I'm getting <coughs> drilled fingertip using his thumb? And, and the answer is no. Um, if you find your access point using any ball with no thumb, it, there's no way your access is going to be the same right. when you put your thumb in the ball. Uh, your release, it just can't, you can't mimic that release, no. and, and that's what gives you your access point. So, so the answer there is no. Um, I think his email was a little more detailed. I think it's he's getting his first fingertip ball drilled. Um, okay. Usually, what we do, you you just use a generic. There's there's a safe area on the ball to drill the ball. It's a generic positive access point type of thing. And so your first ball, they probably use that, and then you find your access once you get your release down. So right. That or you can also find we have some pretty cheap bowling balls that you can buy, drill. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, if you want to go that route to find it first. Before right. you spend $100 on a ball, if right. you really want to drill it specifically uh, based on your positive access point, you can downgrade, get a cheaper ball, use it to practice, to learn your release first, build consistency, and then step up. Yeah, because your positive access may change. If it's your first fingertip ball, absolutely. <laughs> the access <laughs> that you find today may not even be the same you find in a month once you get a little bit more consistent. So, mm -hmm. so don't use that access. 